Welcome, my darlings, to my humble chateau. Please make yourself very comfortable. Relax your mind and release your imagination to me. I will bring you a story to entrance and entertain. Perhaps a frightening one. Perhaps a steampunk. Perhaps a bit of mythology. Anyway, sit back. Enjoy. Enjoy. And subscribe. Panikia, Part 2 by Joy Finlay. Chapter 5 The trip felt awkward to Pin, with his internal gyro who's he what's it resetting his balance more than once, leaving him a little dizzy. Flying in a zeppelin felt worse than walking on sand, and if he could have eaten, well, he might have lost his breakfast quite soon into the trip. They flew slowly towards Skyland, overlooking seafaring vessels traversing the ocean below. Birds dipped and soared, avoiding getting too close as the noisy zeppelin hovered past. Seagulls could have been seen closer to the shore, and sea eagles could be seen riding the air currents higher up. They drifted past clouds, which excited honesty all over again. She voiced her need to touch them to see how cold they were, totally forgetting they would soon be walking on a floating platform that hovered in the clouds. Honesty didn't stop talking. She prattled on and on about the fair, the markets, the children's only playland, and how she was now tall enough to enter. She talked about dresses and shoes and rumors of all-you-could-eat children's buffet. But at the mention of food, well, 600 meters above soil, it was enough for Pin to turn his ears off and close his eyes until they docked on Skylands. He noticed the vibration of the Zeppelin's motor had changed frequency and that Honesty was no longer tapping his arm every few minutes with her nonstop jabbering. Yes, jabbering. He knew what the word meant especially since his Pepe kept telling him to stop it frequently in his early days. So without the jabbering and movement changes, Pin set his sensors going again to find honesty, had indeed stopped talking, and was pressing up against the window, staring up into the city that surrounded them. At first glance, Skyland looked like a metal metropolis, devoid of order. Buildings placed at awkward angles, steam train tracks scattered about, dark towers and many smokestacks. There was a towering crystal glass atrium right in the middle, front and center. Everything was buffed to shine, giving it a look that it constantly glowed. He followed the squealing honesty across the gangplank onto the sky dock and watched as the Zeppelin crew worked their jobs with seasoned efficiency. He turned to watch families entering the train station, the children bubbling with joy. He watched ladies standing on the side of the narrow streets, selling metal red roses from their cane baskets, and newsboys waving their papers in the air. A gentleman at the end of the gangplank handed Honesty two free tickets to the children's buffet. Compliments of Skyland. Honesty turned to Pin, waving her ticket high with a smile on her face. Pin wondered why the gentleman hadn't given the children with their families the same courtesy. But before he could ask, Honesty took his hand again and pulled him onto the steam locomotive's platform. They stepped onto one of the five miniature open carriages and rode the black and silver train to the fair. A must-see for all tourists, as Honesty put it. 
He'd heard that fairs were scary places where they would throw you up and down and all around. He wasn't sure if he wanted to experience the fair. As they entered through the tall wrought iron gates, straight away they were immediately enthralled by the delicate spun metal cages that harbored some of the most dangerous animals in the world. On a dozen perches nearby sat lifelike metal birds with tail feathers of quilled brass and copper. They found a cycle hire stall and paid for a penny farthing rental each. With candy floss in hand, Honesty insisted they both have some, even though he didn't eat at all. They raced around the fair, cycling in and out of the exhibits, past the mechanical jugglers and stilted acrobats, through the Hall of Mirrors, and came to a stop at the Ferris wheel. Oh, please, oh, please, Honesty squealed. This had preceded every request the girl begged of him, so Pin knew he needed only wait till she had finished jumping and make her request. Oh, you must, you must! She danced again, her excitement showing. Come for a ride. It's the largest Ferris wheel in the whole world. He wasn't so sure about that fact, as he'd just heard just the week prior that Mabelland had a large wheel boasting even bigger than Skyland's wheel. But as he had had enough trouble with his internal gyro who's a what's it, constantly resetting on the Zeppelin, he politely told Honesty that he'd wait for her. You enjoy your ride and I shall hold your sugar floss and wait for your return. Her face fell a little, but she handed him the last of the candy floss and joined the queue with the other children her size. Pin watched her with the other children in the Ferris wheel seat as it swung slowly around. He lost sight of her and used the opportunity to look around him at the fair, the city, and the world around him. It was different to what he expected from what Lord Petto had said about the ways of the world and its people. He expected a far more dangerous adventure. Upon returning the cycles to the vendor, Honesty declared that she was indeed famished. Pin pointed to the all-you-can-eat children's buffet sign and wondered out loud why they were eating children. Oh, Pin, you are so funny, said Honesty, giggling again. She took his arm and they followed a group of other young children from the fair towards the children's buffet house. Pink candy floss fluttering away on the wind in their wake. Chapter 6 Having shown the butler at the door their free buffet tickets, Honesty and Pin seated themselves at a metal table in a large dining hall with about twelve other children. Pin watched as the children waited for someone else to start before they all began, helping themselves to platefuls of food. White and silver platters with navy peach trimming lay on each table, overflowing with many different types of meats, cheeses, dried foodstuff, and pastries. Pitcher of cherry-flavored cordial stood next to silver and peach goblets. Honesty had never seen so much food in all her life, and made sure to tell Pin this fact more than once. The hungry children ate and drank at first with great fervor, but once they were almost full and saw there was still plenty of food to share, they all began to relax and talk to each other, celebrating their good fortune. Honesty noticed the curious eyes of those around him, so she stood pulling Pin to his feet and clearing her throat, drawing more interest their direction. Good day, my name is Honesty Goodness and I am the daughter of the wealthiest merchant under Skylands, she said enthusiastically. This, my good fellows, she paused for effect with arms wide open, is Pin, Lord Petal's latest invention. She grinned as if she was Lord Petal's invention herself. She turned towards Pin, her eyes sparkling with excitement. 
she now had an audience. Children left tables with food in hand to crowd around Honesty and her mechanical friend. They stood or sat in awe as Honesty described how she was knocked off her feet by Pin the mechanical boy. There wasn't a child in that great hall that hadn't heard of Lord Petto and his fantastic gadgets and incredible inventions. The children crowded closer to see Pin and his unusual mechanics, and many began to ask him questions about how he was made and what Lord Petto was like. Honesty kept answering on Pin's behalf, interrupting him more than once because Honesty was Pin's only friend. He smiled at her with gratitude, which only gave her more encouragement to continue interrupting him. The children asked to touch Lord Petto's top hat that sat on Pin's head, and before long it had made its way around the small crowd. They asked about his backpack and buttons, as Honesty didn't know the answers to these, she asked Pin. He didn't know, and told her so, which she then promptly expanded on, basically giving the same answer but in much more elaborate detail. Pin marveled at her ability to hold wide-eyed attention while talking about someone other than herself. As Honesty giggled and talked with those around him, Pin began to wonder not for the first time in his short life, what it would be like to taste a mouthful of food. Pin looked over the almost empty platters and picked up a ripe red apple, the brightest object on the table, and turning it over in his hands, curious that something so delicate could bring so much sustenance to a human body. It was about that time he noticed Honesty had stopped talking, yawning her delicate mouth behind her gloved hand. She began talking more slowly about the supposed inner workings of Lord Petto's walking dog, another famous invention of his. She paused again to pass on another contagious yawn that many of the children were sharing. She looked at Pin and blinked back the overwhelming tiredness she had come under. She took the red apple from his hand and looked back at him, slumping down on her seat. Oh, Pin, something's wrong. <gasps> Something is dreadfully wrong. I think we've been drugged. The food. Honesty let the apple pass from her hand as she laid her head on her arms on the tabletop and fell asleep. Pin watched as many other children followed Honesty to their seats or the floor. One small child rested her head in Honesty's lap, while another slowly climbed onto the tabletop, falling asleep where he lay. Pin watched the red apple roll past sleeping children, coming to a messy stop under the foot of the butler. He grinned a toothless grin at Pin as the dock worker stepped up next to him, pointing at Pin what looked like an oversized elephant gun. Bang! went the gun. This is not good, not good indeed, said Pin, as a new metal net flew at him, snagging him and tripping him as he tried to flee. He lay on the hall floor and the foot of the dining table, hearing the horrible men cackling with laughter at their good fortune. Looks like we caught ourselves in a domination in our nets today. <laughs> the boss man will be most pleased. Most pleased indeed. Pin did not like the sound of that at all. Chapter 7 Hanging in an oversized birdcage one not unlike the delicate homes of the dangerous fair animals, Pin watched six blackened children shovel coal into the hungry mouth of an engine boiler. They were slaves, forced into manual labor in the bowels of the city. The room was stifling hot and terribly loud with the noise of machinery. 
Little feet scurried back and forth while little hands gripped coal-coated buckets and shovels. These wretched children shuffled to the coal chute where a large pile of black rock towered above them. They dug their blunt shovels into the stack, dragged back a scoop of coal, then shuffled the ten steps it took to get to the furnace mouth, where they would quickly deposit the coal into the boiler, trying not to get too close to the heat. Then they'd shuffle after the children before them, back to the coal stack for yet another shovelful of coal. It was sweaty, tiring work of a full-grown adult. Yet there they were, twelve children, working five-hour about shifts to keep the engine fires high. In the five days since Pin and the children were captured, Pin had been subject to questioning, hammering, and tickling sort of torture. When the evil butler and his guards finally gave up trying to reprogram the metal boy, they tried to shut him up in a cage, but Pin wouldn't move. Eventually, when they asked him nicely, and he complied, he was dragged to the engine room where Honesty and her crew were working and hung up from a support bream in the roof. Watching the whole process take place below him, Pin had quickly calculated what Lord Petto's engineering genius had missed. The room was too small to accommodate the number of full-size adults needed to keep the engines fully loaded with coal in order to keep the city afloat. So the horrible workers had replaced themselves with children to meet the engine-stoking requirements. He watched Ionesty wipe her gloved wrist across her sweaty face, smearing black across her bow. She looked for Pin in the cage at the back of the room, smiled weakly at his predicament, and kept marching towards the coal stack. He felt much concern for her, and although he didn't quite understand why this was happening, he knew somehow that it was very, very wrong. The whole situation was wrong. He watched another shift change. The tiny coalies coming and going. The boilers were loaded with coal. The engines kept running and Skylands kept flying. After many days of hanging around in his cage, he was interrupted out of his aloneness by a jolt to his foot and a tickling sensation running over his overhanging leg. He twisted around in his cage to find Spidey climbing through the gilded bars. He was indeed surprised to find this little critter so high above where he had just last left, and delighted he was. Spidey, you loyal creature, how did you find me? Spidey claimed onto Pin's extended hand and turned to show him the blinking light on his neck. You were able to track me? Lord Petto is a clever engineer indeed, he smiled at his friend in good fortune, then remembered the children. We need to get out of here, Spidey. Do you know the way? Of course you do. Spidey nodded his head in confirmation. The little mechanical creature skittered from Pin's hand down his thigh to the bars of the cage. He extended a delicate claw and proceeded to saw through the metal with the edge of his jagged leg. A guard arrived, causing a pause in Spidey's rescue efforts. He hid under Pin's hands while the guard berated the children, harassing them with a club and very gruff words. Pin watched as honesty hid younger, smaller children behind her skirts. She kept her eyes down, shovel in hand, and shooed the kids towards the coal stack. Passing Pin on the way past, he felt a burn in his chest, and a frown graced his face. He took a moment to decipher this new sensation in his being, and deduced that he was concerned for Honesty's well-being. She was his friend, and apart from Spidey and his Pepe, she was the only person who cared for him. He needed to escape and rescue the poor girl and take her home. 
When the guard left and Spidey removed the offending lock, Pin dropped it down in front of Honesty as she passed. She looked up at him with wide eyes, full of hope once again. She smiled and began to whisper to the young children around her, who then looked up at him, too. Hope spread like wildfire, each set of eyes saying what Pin couldn't say aloud. It was time to escape. Chapter 8 It took a while for Honesty and Pin to hatch a plan to free all of Sky City's child slaves. We are not the only boiler room slaves in the city, Pin. Honesty sat and watched the mechanical boy, shoveling with a tool in each hand, moving quickly across the boiler room. Scoop, trundle, tip, trundle, scoop, trundle, tip. His speed and strength matched the work of all six children on shift, and he was able to alleviate their burden while they slept on the floor next to Honesty. Yes, by my calculation, our boiler room alone would not be enough to keep the city in the sky. He paused and tilted his head and thought, when Spidey skittered right into his heel with a piece of coal on his back. Pin lifted his shoe to let the critter by. There will be another two such rooms underground, much the same as this. He resumed his work, careful of his spider friend. Two? Goodness me, that would mean another... She paused to calculate. Twenty-four. Twenty-four children who could not possibly be caught up in this work. Yes, yeah, so if we're able to make our escape, we must also free the other boiler room coalies as well. Honesty sat back on her hands with an eyebrow raised high. Then she gave a rather unladylike groan and covered her face. There is no need for concern, Honesty. With Spidey's help, we will free everyone and send them straight home. Pin knew it was a simple plan, mostly involving Spidey, picking every lock they came across, and the children finding their own way home once they reached the city streets above. To prove Honesty... Spidey's usefulness. They had him unlock the supply closet to give the younger children blankets to wear for warmth once they escaped. Pin and Spidey set out for reconnaissance. He came back hours later and indicated by tapping that there was two other engine rooms they needed to free children from. See, it is but a few doors between Spidey's tools and our freedom. He knows the way. We follow him, and, as my peppy would say, superb as a sprocket. But what about the guards? A boy Honesty's age asked. Spidey tapped Pin's shoulder in a sort of Morse code, and Pin was able to translate. They come and go like clockwork. We won't be able to do it all. Free all three boiler rooms in one night. Yes, you are correct. The faces of the children surrounding the room fell. They didn't want to stay there any longer than they could help it. Not to worry, we will make it all work out fine. And he proceeded to draw a map of the city underground and their plan of escape. They revised the original plan to try and rescue all the children over two nights, freeing their engine room first, then the next one closest. Spidey would lead Pin to each room to set kids free by himself. No, that's a terrible idea, Pin. I won't allow it, demanded Honesty. Pin was perplexed at her sudden change in emotion, which for Honesty was an unusual, but he was still perplexed. Pin, I will not allow you to go to the next engine room all on your own. You must simply accept my help or these poor children may not be set free. Please explain your concern, Honesty. I do not understand. For he truly didn't understand. I thought it was a good idea for me to go alone. I didn't want you or anyone else to get caught again, or worse, injured, while trying to escape. Honesty straightened her top hat, took Pin's hand and looked into his eyes. Pin, 
You are the most amazing example of Lord Pedo's ingenious engineering and gadgeteering that this world has ever seen. I cannot bear to think that something awful could happen to you while you were trying to get free from a place that I dragged you to. Pin, please do not go alone. Let me come with you. I can watch behind us while Spidey watches in front. I can help free the younger children and get them topside. Please let me help, she pleaded. Thank you, Honesty, for your friendship. I do not want you to get hurt. You have been through much more than your biological body can manage. He tapped his finger to his chin. But you have a point. He looked at her. I could use your help to keep an eye out, to help with the younger children. He nodded. All right, Honesty. I will use your help. But you follow me where I go and do what I do, understand? He asked her. She jumped up and down again, quietly squealing like her old self, a very dirty, sooty black version of her old self, but her old self all the same. Pin smiled in gratitude. Honesty smiled back. Pin, thank you. Together we can make this work. When should we do this? Honesty, how about tonight? He asked. It was decided that night would be their night for escape and rescue. So quoth this raven. What a fun little story. Uh, Joy Finlay has done such a good job of transferring this to a steampunk themed story and I'm excited to share more with you next week it should be the finale of Panikia and the week after that I'm hoping the steampunk version of Snow White if you've enjoyed this give Joy a visit and give me a like if you comment I'm always happy to comment back I love to know my subscribers. Ring the bell and subscribe if you haven't so you know when to come up and see me. And if you want to help me out, please share and get the word out there about me. I have merchandise for you to buy. And if you're interested in a sale, I will manage to do that. Let me know. I'll see what I can do about doing it at a cost, um, just for fun, just to bring the price down, to get it out there. And I will see you next time, my darlings. Bye-bye. <laughs>